this fair play 2333 and i want to give a salute to all my cinema cronies welcome back to the power book multiverse and cinema show where you get the latest in power universe and cinema breakdown I, I, I just want the life that in this can't afford we whip, we whipping them babies once you can't afford not looking for beef but some you can't avoid and if i'm on a mission is you on the voyage we already know that Kane is going to step up and he's going to step over to Noma's organization and he's going to be one of the top guys. I think that he's going to replace Obi. Now, why would he replace Obi? Obi is not under Noma's thumb anymore. Tyreek has gotten Obi's family out of London, so really he don't have to do what she say anymore. I feel like the only reason that Obi was really stuck on doing what Noma was saying is because he wanted to make sure that his family was safe in London because she had all the reach and all the pull in London. Honestly, when we look at Noma over here in the States, Noma ain't really got no power. All the power she got over the Tejadas, all the power she has over Tyreek and Effingham, that's just her promising them that she can get stuff done. That's her blackmailing them and being able to get done, stuff done to their people. But she don't have no soldiers over here who can run down on them for themselves. So when you look at the situation, she needs Kane. It's the same way when Tommy and Ghost, they had all the work, but they didn't have no soldiers. So they went around recruiting people. They went to see Q-Dubs and Ghost told Q-Dubs, man, I'll give you double what you was getting in the shipment and i give you a better cut percentage than I was giving your brother and that's off the love. Um, that was crazy that Ghost killed Roller and then went and seen his brother like everything was all good. That's a side note, but that stuff like that really happened in the streets. Anyway, so when you look at it, Noma don't have no soldiers. She don't have no real help. And Obi was the one who was like keeping stuff together for her. Obi was, you know, going out and doing the dirty work. He was doing the research on it. If you ever watch Fresh Prince, um, Obi reminds you of the butler from Fresh Prince. I'm talking about the new Fresh Prince. If you know anything about the butler from the new Fresh Prince, he had gang ties back in London. He actually fled from London in order to keep his son safe um, and to keep his son out of the gang activities that he grew up in. And he was sending his son back to London and all that. But anyway, so besides needing soldiers and needing somebody who know the New York landscape, somebody who got their ears to the street and their feet on the pavement, somebody who willing to do the dirty work, somebody who not worried about nothing, somebody who already built. You know, when you get a soldier for the streets, you want somebody who built for the moment. You don't want nobody that you got to train for the moment, especially when you high up in that organization. Like Noma, Noma, she was moving cocaine worldwide, whatever else, guns. She was moving that worldwide. Mecca was an international snitch. Remember that. He was getting people um, jammed up from coast to coast, um, across from pond to pond. So the real reason that Kane is coming into her organization is because Kane worked under Mecca. Kane got a chance to know more about Mecca's organization than anybody else. Mecca trust Kane. Mecca really saw Kane as a protege. Now, who knows how far out in front he will put Kane. And we obviously know that he brought Kane in, obviously, to try to keep a eye on Monet and get um, closer to Monet. Um, but also, once he got Kane in that, he started to notice that, oh, Kane is a real soldier. Kane is actually built for this. Kane isn't the smartest, but he got hard. And one thing, you can teach somebody to be smart. You can't always teach somebody to have heart. Um, heart is kind of something that you're born with. Now, you can develop heart, but it's certain things that you just have to go through in order to be able to understand the nuances of them and in order to not be afraid when they happen. Like, it was a time, you know, when growing up in the hood, after you hear so many gunshots, you start hearing gunshots and you don't even flinch. But when you like a seven year old, eight year old, and you first hear a gunshot, you like, oh man, they shooting, where the shots coming from? But when you get into your twenties, you get into your teens and you've been around gunshots all your life, you hear that gunshot and you able to instantly tell, oh, that's far away and you don't flinch. Or you hear that gunshot and you be like, oh, that's across the street or that's down the block. Who that's shooting? But you don't be scared because it become part of your environment. And that's what Kane was. Kane is somebody who's not afraid of his environment. 
Kane is somebody who's not afraid to get his hands dirty, as I said already. So he would be the perfect person to take over for Noma because he already knows America. When it comes to Obi, it's cool, but Obi got to reach out to too many people. Obi got to pay too many dollars. Guess what? When Kane coming to get some information, um, if you ain't if you ain't giving up no information, Kane ain't giving up no money. You gonna be giving up blood. Even when you look at the fact that Kane went to go find out who killed Zeke. He instantly just started torturing the guy. He was like, I'm not finna play. I'm not finna be asking this guy all these questions. And I'm definitely not finna pay him. He, I'm not finna be extorted. I'm Kane Tejada. I do the extorting. So Noma is smart for doing this. Now, the part that she's not smart at is that she don't understand that one, Kane is controlled by Effie's vagina. Listen, um, Kane will do anything for Effie at this point. And like his mama said, he vagina whooped. He's a sucker for love. Um, and the second thing is, although Kane has become more strategic, um, Kane has become more methodical, um, he's still just a, a street punk, a young thug with um no guidance, you know what I'm saying? And a in a in a man with mommy issues so his emotions gonna always lead him and his emotions gonna make him do the worst thing or sometimes his emotions may make him do what's right but it won't be the best for business now what do i mean by that right your emotions may tell you yo let me free effie because you know i want her to get out of here because i love her so much but What's going to end up happening is you're not going to see that Effie done left the murder weapon inside the car or Effie done put a brick under your seat and you finna let her out and the police finna close in on you and she done set you up. Whereas you supposed to just let her take in the streets, you supposed to let people take their lick. Whatever they got coming, you supposed to let them have it coming. Like perfect example in Belly when uh the dude who was in the front of the uh barbershop with Nas when he saw them two boys walking across the street with that mean mug on he looked up he noticed them he looked at Nas and he said all right God I'll see you later or I'm finna get out of here son whatever he said to him but he wasn't finna put himself in the middle of that because what ends up happening if you put yourself in the middle of people business in the streets and it ain't got nothing to do with you now it become your business somebody might owe somebody some money and you might be like no nah, i was there he ain't take it i saw him okay so if you vouching for the fact he ain't take it and you saw him not take it i said he took it so who took it if you say he ain't take it did you take it now both of y'all in the same predicament i'm hoping y'all listening to these gems i'm dropping on y'all um but anyway kane tahada will come into noma's organization and he'll be um one of the greatest men to ever work with her right off top just because of who he is i don't think noma has had anybody to work for her that's this brutal now if we get a backstory on noma or if we get a backstory on lorenzo or maybe if we get a, a backstory on Mecca, we will probably see what Mecca was like when he was younger. You know what I'm saying? What Lorenzo was like when he was younger. But when we look at Kane, Kane is, in my opinion, Kane is showing us what uh, Kanan and Ghost and Tommy, well, no, Kanan, what Kanan is going to be like in raising Kanan. And what I would love for them to do, this is a side note, I would love for them to, his name is Kane, C-A-N-E, but I would love for Kane nickname to come from the respect that Lorenzo had for Kanan and how he put it down in the streets. So um, what I need y'all to do, y'all doing a great job at this too. So continue to flood in the Facebook, join Power Book Multiverse and Cinema. I'm going to accept your request or one of my admins going to accept your request. Um, salute to all the cinema cronies. Check out the original Chicago Hood web series, No Time to Play Fair, Chicago Do's and Don'ts episode. It's out now, written by, co-directed by, and starring me, Fairplay2333.